Hi, I'm Diane Williamson. Come with me as we take a look inside the alpaca industry. Before we get started, we want to make sure we're all on the same page regarding what an alpaca is and what it isn't. It is not, for example, a llama. To clear up any confusion, we talked with Karen Dunn, alpaca breeder and owner of Angel Fleece Farms in Kentucky, about the differences. Llamas are normally anywhere from about 250 to 450 pounds, so they're a larger animal. And they are mainly used for pack. A lot of times you'll hear people doing llama trekking. And they'll take them through the woods and maybe put a, a pack on them with maybe, you know, um, a luncheon or something like that. Whereas alpacas, they're a smaller animal. At maturity, they're anywhere from 120 pounds to maybe 200 pounds. And they, are, they don't have the structure to be a pack animal. And so they're, they're, you're using their fiber. Is there one type of alpaca or are there many? No, actually there's two types of alpacas. There's the wakaya alpaca, which is more of the fluffy teddy bear type alpaca. Their, their fiber's a little loftier. And then you have your surrey alpacas, and they have the, uh, the ringlets that kind of fall from a center part in the center of their back and fall down. It's more drapey. And they make up about 10% of the alpaca population, whereas wakayas uh, make up about 90%. And both of their fibers uh, are used in textile and finished, in finished products. Um, a Surrey uh, product might have, because of the weight of their fiber, is sometimes used in, in clothing that's going to have a nice drape to it. It drapes okay. very nicely. I love it. Mm. <laughs> this may have to come home with me. <laughs> that's all right. Is that all right? Yeah, that's fine. That's what these animals produce. They produce a really high quality, luxurious fiber that finishes out into just glorious uh, sweaters and capes and all kinds of, of nice upscale products. And, and that's, that's the important part of, of, of this industry is the breeding of the animals for the fleece and, and the sale of that and developing a commercial and textile industry with, with their fleece. It seems like it's it's certainly a responsibility, you know, to bring these animals onto your you know your property and take care of them. But it doesn't seem like it's like work if you're enjoying it. To walk me through a day in the life. Well, you're right. It's not really like work because it they're so easy to care for that it's not labor intensive. We can feed our herd probably in about an hour to an hour and a half, and that's not much time when you've got you know, that many animals and stuff. So it's, it's very quick and you enjoy it. You get to see them and you kind of talk to them a little bit too, so. The real work involves shearing the animals and Karen's herd gets professionally sheared once a year. Some of the fiber is processed and returned to the farm and the rest goes to a co-op in exchange for finished goods to sell in the farm store. Alpaca fiber is often compared to cashmere due to its luxurious softness and warmth and the revenue generated from the sale of the fiber for finished goods is a strong incentive for many to get into the alpaca industry. Breeding and the sale of seed stock is another. The North American alpaca industry boasts the largest and most respected alpaca show system and judge training program. There are numerous regional shows held throughout North America, which include both halter shows and fleece shows. Additionally, Alpaca Owners Association hosts the National Alpaca Show and Fleece Conference each year. The Alpaca Owners Association maintains the world's largest and most accurate DNA-validated pedigree registry. Since the registry has been closed for over 15 years, owners and breeders can trace their animals back to the original sires and dams, which entered the U.S. in the 1990s. And because the registry relies on DNA testing, breeders can use the EPD, or Expected Progeny Differences Program, to predict the qualities a sire and dam's offspring will have. So what is the EPD program exactly? Carl Heinrich owns New Era Fiber in Gallatin, Tennessee. It is the method of tracking the qualities of an animal that almost every, all the other livestock industries use. By looking at what the progeny of, an, of a male and or a female, either one, produced in the past, 
that tells you what you can predict what they will produce in the future. Um, it has to do with individual traits. For alpacas, it's all about fiber at this point because those are things that we can measure. Um, so we, we send our fiber in for a histogram, which we've been doing for many years, and it sends us back a little graph that shows us what most of the fibers look like. The data on there now is being collected by the AOA and put into a database, and then predictions are made based off of the animal's fiber and its offspring's fiber. Being able to predict and control the fiber's consistency is key to producing high-quality yarn. Once New Era receives a batch of fiber, it gets washed and dried and sometimes dyed. Then it begins its long journey through a labyrinth of pickers, separators, carters, pullers, bobbins, steamers, cones, and skeins. The end result depends upon which type of alpaca fiber began the process, Wakaya or Surrey. Like most alpaca farmers, the Heinrichs started small. We started with four animals and no knowledge. I tell everybody that, that we talk to, to start with fewer animals and better quality. The, the best quality that they can afford. And it's different for everybody. We tell everybody, if you, if you want it to be a business, it can be a business. If you want it to be fun, it can just be fun. I like where I live. I have the opportunity to live in a rural area on a 60 acre farm, but just outside of the city. Uh, it's, it's stressful and relaxing because having babies and doing those things and caring for animals when they get sick can be very stressful. When we first got them, we used to just go feed them and watch them, just watch them eat. And then the other thing is being able to talk about, I find it a lot of fun being able to talk to people about something they know nothing about. It, you know, you have something that has a really good quality and people don't know anything about it and they want to learn about it. And that's fun. You know, that's, that's great fun for us. The lifestyle's very fun. It's, it's relaxing. You enjoy your animals. If you go out into the fields with them, you just kind of watch them and they're entertaining. If you've had a stressful day, you can go out in the fields and talk to the animals and just just relaxes you. As you can see, the alpaca lifestyle can be anything you want it to be. A relaxing pastime or a potentially lucrative business venture. Whether you simply enjoy them as pets, show them, breed them, or shear them for their fiber, the alpaca lifestyle could be the lifestyle you've been looking for. To find out more, please visit the Alpaca Owners Association website at alpacainfo.com or on Facebook or Twitter.